Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on Rust programming language. Do you know friends that there are approximately 73,000 of entries if, there, if you type a keyword called buffer overflow. Basically buffer overflow is a type of bug that basically occur in C or C++ and are very difficult to detect. If I talk about another issue common in C or C++, it includes dangling pointers and double free. But Rust is unique in its own arsenal that guarantees memory safety. In Rust, you can write buffer overflows, dangling pointers or double free bugs. Simply by using Rust instead of C or C++, you are removing a whole class of security flaws in your software. But before we discuss our today's agenda, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So first, we are going to discuss about what is Rust. Then we are going to discuss about why Rust. Moving ahead, we are going to discuss Rust versus other programming language. Then we are going to learn about memory management in Rust. And at the end, we are going to conclude our session with a hands up. So let's start with what is Rust. Rust is a system programming language created in 2006 by Mozilla employee named Graydon Hoyer. This language is described by him as safe, concurrent and a practical language that supports the functional and imperative paradigms. Rust syntax is similar to that of C++ programming language. Rust is free and open source software, which means that anyone can use it for free. And the source code is openly shared so that people can improve the software design. In 2016, 17 and 2018, the Stack Overflow Developer Survey named Rust as one of the most loved programming languages. In contrast to Caloc or Malloc, there is no direct memory management. Rust manages its memory internally. So now, let's discuss why Rust. Why so many developers choose Rust? Rust is actually popular among programmers for a variety of reasons. And these reasons are such as Rust is fast. Rust programming language is a multi-paradigm programming language with syntax similar to C++. As a result, learning Rust becomes very simple for anyone. Rust code compiles to native machine code across multiple platforms. Then Rust helps developers to write memory safe code. Unlike C, it does not support memory safe operations such as dangling pointers, uninitialized pointers, and null pointers. Rust also has low overhead. All the values in the Rust programming language have a unique owner. And the scope of the value is same as the scope of the owner. That is why it has the same system of ownership. Next, Rust is kind of adaptable. Rust is built for performance and safety, particularly safe concurrency through the use of borrow checker and ownership to validate references. Then, Rust is simple to apply. Rust programming language syntax is similar to C++ language, making it simple to use and comprehend. Then, Rust is strongly typed and statically typed, which means that Rust is designed in such a way that the code can be checked at compile time. And if the compilation fails, there is no extra memory usage. Binding with C programs, Rust has also an API that provides memory safety and like vectors employs high level functions. Now, let's discuss about Rust versus other programming languages. First, let's discuss Rust versus C++. Rust, when compared to C++, is simply much safer. Rust protects both its own abstraction and the abstraction created by developers, whereas C++ does not. Specific errors in C++ can result in arbitrary behavior. Whereas Rust allows you to focus on what is truly important. And while C or C++ remains one of the most popular programming languages, it frequently causes issues. Rust is simply easier to learn. The learning curve is not as steep. There is no technical depth in Rust as in C++. It supports more concurrency and its performance is comparable. Rust also allows programmers to write unsafe code, but it defaults to safe code. If you opt in, you can write unsafe code in Rust with unsafe keyword, which comes by default with C++. Then let's compare Rust with Java. If we talk about Rust versus Java, 
it turns out that it is significantly slower than Rust, especially when compared to keeping up with C in many domains. On top of that, you should consider faster startup times and smaller memory footprint. Java employs garbage collection for memory management, which reduces the performance, though it is worth noting that it simplifies the programming. Then let's discuss about Rust versus Python. Rust is well thought out when it was made. Rust allows you to write wrap statements and lambdas and everything is an expression, making it easier to compose specific parts of the language. And Python, on the other hand, does not have it. Rust lack classes, so object orientation is not as developed as it is in Python. Python also encounters the need to write more tests as well as production outages or running crashes. Rust reduces the cost of identifying and correcting the potential bugs. Now, let's discuss about Rust versus Go. Go is not at all expressive as compared to Rust. Rust has a flexible and expressive system that allows for the creation of new container types which is capable of holding various types of elements, generics, traits and algebraic data types. You have less control over the resources and memory in Go when compared to the Rust. Now, let's discuss the memory management in Rust. Memory management in Rust has fine-grained memory management, but it is managed automatically once it is created. When you allocate memory in Rust, you never have to truly free it. You can choose when to free it, but never call it. Rust handles it automatically. Each variable has a scope for which it is valid, and it is automatically deallocated when it leaves that scope. The operating system allocates memory to each program in Rust. Rust also has a shared memory when we can store a reference piece of data and keep track of the reference count using ownership. First, we are going to discuss about heap. It is a significant memory block and it is managed by the Rust ownership model. All dynamic data is stored in this location. Then, if we talk about stack, Rust allocates all the values to the stack. This is the static memory is allocated by the default at this point. Each thread has its own stack. It contains structures as well as pointers to the dynamic data. Next, if we talk about is mutability. By default, values in Rust are immutable and must be marked as mutable if needed. Now, let's discuss some of the hands-on on Rust. So, I will navigate to you on an online compiler where we are going to try out few of the programs in Rust. So, for navigating to the online compiler, just type Rust all over here. So the first official site which you are going to get is www.rust.lang.org. Just you have to click on it. Then there is an icon called Playground. Just click on it. Okay. So this is one of your kind of say you can an online compiler where we are going to try out few of the programs. So now first we are going to try how to produce a hello world output. So as you can see, I have declared a function main all over here which is written as fn main. Then inside the curly braces, I have used println and then you can see here I have used an exclamation mark. Then the two parentheses and inside the double quotation, I have written hello and then world. So this println is definitely printing the hello. So this you can see as one of the printing process in Rust. So we have got our hello world printed all over here. Now let's try to learn about few of the Rust data types. Fine. So let's study about Rust data types. Do you know friends, the type system represents the various types of values that the language can support. Before the program stores or manipulates the supplied values, the type system validates them. This ensures that the code works as it should. Rust is a statically typed programming language and every value in Rust has a specific data type. Based on the value assigned to the variable, the compiler can automatically determine its data type. So, for creating a variable, we are going to use the let keyword. So, let's declare a few of the variables, such as the first, let's say let band name, then we are going to declare it as Pink Floyd. Okay. Now, we are going to put the semicolons 
and let's try to print it. This is actually of string type. So for printing, what we are going to do, we are just going to type the print ln statement, print ln. Okay. Then we are going to say inside the quotations, what we have to suppose say band name is, and we can say something like, okay, then we can call our variable, which is band name. Okay. Let's try to print it and run this command and let's see what will happen. Let's try to run the program. So for running, as you can see, there is an icon called run. So you have to just click on it. So when it compiles, you can see we have created our variable band name, which is of string type and we have printed it using print ln. So there's some differences like you can see if we talk about Java. So in Java, you have system dot out dot print ln. Okay. So when you compare it with that, there is only print ln in this and there is an exclamatory mark, which you cannot see in some of the other languages. So this is one of the thing which I find quite different. So which you can take a note of. Now let's try to print some other variables or different data types. Next, I have created a float data type all over here in which I have declared interest as our variable. So we have always used a let keyword to declare our variable and which is equals to 7.9. Then I have printed it using the print ln function and you can say your bank interest is then I have called this variable called interest. Okay. You can see it's printed. If I run again, you can see that it's your bank interest is 7.9 is getting printed. Okay. So this is of data type. We can say of float because we are using it in decimals, not integer. Okay. Now let's check on the Boolean data type. So now I have printed let is right equals to true. Okay. So this is a Boolean data type, which I'm going to write all over here. So where I am storing is right value as true all over here. So I'm printing is your answer, right? Then I'm calling our variable is right. So you can see it shows that is your answer, right? And it prints out our variable as true. So I have told you about few of the variables of different data types, such as string float and Boolean. Now let's discuss about macro called print ln. But before that, let me tell you something about macro. Rust actually provides an excellent macro support. But what is macro? Metaprogramming is made possible by macros. And macros actually are something which allows you to write code that writes other code. You can imagine that macro provides similar functionality to the functions, but without the runtime cost. However, because macros are expended during the compile time, there is some compile time cost. So now, as we were discussing about print ln, this macro takes two arguments. The first one is a special syntax, which is the placeholder. And the second one is a variable or constant. And also, Rust macros are not same as C macros. Rust macros are used to manipulate the token free, whereas C macros are used for text substitution. So when we are declaring our variable name, we can declare with no type specified and also with type specified. So you can see the syntax here. I have used the let keyword. So let variable name equals to value. And if I have to declare the specific type, then I can say let variable name is to data type equals to value. Let me show you an example for the same. Okay. So now I'm going to create two variables in which the first will be no type will be specified. And in the second one, I'm going to declare the specific type. So this is our code as you can see all over here. So in the first one, I have declared let ticket price equals to 27,000. Okay. So in which there is no type specified. So for your clarity, I'm going to write the same, no type specified. Then all over here, I'm going to declare the type is specified. Fine. So as you can see, I'm going to print the same. So as you can see all over here, I have declared the type as float F64. And this I have used as float. So when I'm going to run this, you can see all over here that our ticket price and toy price are printed. So which is 27,000 and 37.17. I hope so you would have got idea regarding how to declare a variable. Now you can declare a variable with no type specified. And also you can declare a variable with type is specified. 
Now let me discuss your concept of immutability with the Rust. As you can see, by default, variables are kind of immutable, read only in Rust. In other words, the variable's value cannot be changed once a value is bound to a variable name. Let's understand with an example. So dear friends, as you can see, and then inside the main function, I have declared the first ticket price as 27,000. Then I'm trying to print this ticket price. Okay. Then I'm trying to change the ticket price to 37,000. And then I'm printing the ticket price is changed. Then I'm calling our variable ticket price. Okay. Now, if I try to run this, definitely I'm going to get an error that I'm trying to change our assignment of ticket price to 37,000, which shows that in Rust, the variables declare are kind of immutable at first. But you can also change this immutability by typing a specific keyword, which I will tell you right now so that you can change the immutability to mutability if you want to change. So for changing immutable variable to a mutable variable, what you can do here, you can declare a keyword name as mute. Okay, so let mute variable equals to value. Similarly, so as you can see, declaring variables can be also of two types where you are specifying the different data types. Okay, so for the same, you can also use let mute variable name is to data type equals to value. Okay, let's try to understand this with an example. So now in our program, the earlier program, we didn't declare mute as a keyword. Okay, but now, so for changing the immutable variable to a mutable variable, I have added a keyword called mute to our variable name ticket price. And still, I'm trying to change this variable ticket price as 37,000 and trying to print the ticket price is changed to and calling our variable ticket price. I hope so. This time, no error will happen because we have changed the mutability of our variable name. So you can see also all over here that ticket price is 27,000, which is changed to 37,000. That was all about today's session. I hope so. You would have understand few of the concepts such as immutability, how to declare a variable name, knowing more about Rust, why is it so much successful and why developers love Rust as a most prominent language or the most promising language in the future endeavors. That was all for today's session. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our session for today on Rust. We did some hands-on to give you an insight regarding what is mutability, how to declare a variable name and why the variables are kind of immutable, how we can change its mutability basically. Then I've also taught you about how to print hello world, which is one of the most basic thing. Then we discussed about why Rust is so much popular among developers. So I hope so. It would have given you some inspiration to start learning Rust. Have a wonderful day. See you on the next session. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides full stack web development course in collaboration with ENICT IIT Guwahati. The course link of which is given in the description below.